Today we got a proper look at Grand Canyon's North Rim, with its cooler air, thick forests, and arguably superior views. After a memorable goodbye, we drove north into Utah for some rest in the hot city of St. George. Breakfast on the north rim of the Grand Canyon was great. We ate it on our room's port. Somewhere beyond the blueberries and blackberries and cottage cheese, there's actual views of the canyon itself. On a trip like this, you pack and unpack many, 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 many times, and you get pretty good at it. This footage is not time-lapse. This is real time. I swear. Anyway, turn off the electric fireplace and hit the road. The morning was spent driving wherever we could along the North Rim to see the various viewpoints. You wind through the forest on these little curvy roads and then you pull into a parking area and you see these big views open up before you. It's amazing. Our first stop was a place called Cape Royal, actually at the very end of the road. The cliffs and the spires and the valleys here on the north side are kind of more jumbled and crazy and they have all these like patterns around the concentric cliffs and stuff. It seemed more colorful and kind of in your face than the south rim. It was really, really interesting. And also there's the added bonus that there are trees here. And you really do find out that the north rim is higher than the south rim. Depending on where you are, you can look down onto the south rim. And the watchtower that we climbed up yesterday on the south rim, I think this is it, right here in the center. The highlight of Cape Royal is down a short path. It's called Angel's Window, this kind of natural hole in the rock. The people walking above it seemed like they were having fun, so we went there too. It's a little bit unnerving being this high up on this narrow little rock ledge, but the views are completely worth it. The main thing I noticed about the North Rim's views was that the hills were red and the vegetation was green, and that was kind of the color scheme. But also those concentric cliffs running around, it was just amazing. We stopped at a place called Roosevelt Point for a picnic. My blood sugars were keeping up their perfection. It was 99 and the food was great, but how could it not be with a view like this? Our final experience looking into the canyon was at a place called Point Imperial. And that's a great name because the views here were especially dramatic and huge. And what's that in the middle? Actually, this is called Mount Hayden, a notable peak in an area teeming with them. And as we gazed at the scenery here, I noticed that some climbers had taped a note onto the ground saying that they were climbing Mount Hayden and that if we saw them, please take a picture and email it to them. I tried, took several photos, but I didn't see them. Sorry, Tyler. And the last thing we did on the North Rim was stop at Greenland Lake. There's a short trail into the woods that leads to this little lake. I don't know if it's like technically a lake or what, but to me it was somewhere between a pond and a puddle. But it is very, very bucolic and very nice. At the end of the trail, there's this little wooden shack. It's from the 1890s and it was used to store salt for cows, which used to graze around here. We looked inside and there was nothing inside, but just enough space for me to move in and fulfill my fantasy of being an old prospector. Now get the hell off my property.
In the area, there's evidence of lightning and fire. And we got a little bit more information about that later, because my diabetes necklace broke, so I had to pull over and fix the chain. And the place we pulled over had these information signs about lightning and fire. And so we learned again that fire and lightning are just part of nature's system of renewal. And that was it for the North Rim and for the Grand Canyon. We drove away down Arizona Highway 67, feeling good that we'd really gotten to see the Grand Canyon from all different angles and all different sides. And shortly after passing another bison sign, we saw a lot of people pulled over to the side of the road with their cameras out. And whenever that happens, you pull over too. This time it was totally worth it. A huge group of bison, even more than we'd seen in Oklahoma. And pretty close too. I had Masio go closer and get some photos. We continued down the road and I noticed that the odometer was just about to hit 10,000 miles for the trip. So I watched it and watched it and there it was. 10,000 miles on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. 10,000 miles since leaving Los Angeles, making it to the Atlantic Ocean, and now all the way back here. And we're still only in the middle part of the trip. It's only day 58. Eventually the road started going down from the great heights of the north rim of the Grand Canyon into lower places. It was lower and hotter. And as we entered the town of Colorado City, it was dusty and hot, but it was in a nice setting. And it was here that we hit the Utah state line. We drove away from the sign and I wasn't thinking about it at the time, but later I thought back to this and realized, oh wait, I know Colorado City. It featured very heavily in the book Under the Banner of Heaven by John Krakauer. The book was about some murders that happened by some Mormon fundamentalists, many of whom live in towns like Colorado City, want to have multiple wives, and don't take kindly to outsiders. But I highly recommend the book. Like everything John Krakauer writes, it's a very interesting topic and it's very well written. We checked into our Econo Lodge at St. George, put our stuff in the room, and then drove to a place called Simply Mac hoping to fix Maceo's broken iPhone. They said they couldn't do it there and it would take them as long as it would take us to send it off to Apple, so we might as well do it ourselves. So, no luck there. The only choice for dinner for me in St. George was, of course, Larson's. Because my name is Larson, even spelled the same way with an E in. I asked the girl working there about it and she said, well, it used to be owned by a Larson, but now it's owned by a Garrett. But hey, to me, it's still Larson. We ate in the room, took a rest, and thought back to our experiences at the Grand Canyon. The next day was pretty much all in the hotel. Breakfast was in the room, and lunch was in the room. I sat around, admired my Grand Canyon sunburn, and we did drive around St. George a little bit, looking at the rock hills north of town, and not enjoying the hotter temperatures 102. Dinner was in the room, sushi. And I spent about six hours carefully planning out the next week. We talked about skipping Zion National Park because school had just let out in Utah and we thought it would be super crowded. But finally, after six hours of planning, I made all the reservations for campsites and hotels we would need to see all of these parks and places in Southern Utah. So it was all set. Only thing is it's gonna be hot. Tomorrow we do make it to Zion National Park. The crowds aren't that bad, and we even go hiking. We spent the evening at a hotel in a small town called Panguitch, Utah, but there was a bit of an emergency and we had to go to the hospital. Everything was mostly okay afterwards, but we're gonna have to be careful at these parks this week. <laughs>